I'm your host, Nick Spikey, and here, sorry, damn it. Hi, I'm your host, Mick Spikey, here on Canvases and Queens, two artists exploring one theme related to drag and art. Tom Oxnam is here. Today on the show, we'll dive deep into the subject of fan art. Or maybe not. So stay tuned, grab your brushes, because it's time to spill some tin. And once again, it's me, Mick Spikey, here on Canvases and Queens. He's the villain of the season. It's artist Tom Oxnam. That's me. Beep, I'm going to make your life hell. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. How are you going? How are you, Tom? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. No complaints. Uh, feeling better? Excited to chat. Feeling much better. As we're recording now, I heard through the grapevine that you just celebrated your 30th birthday. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Uh, and awesome. then immediately I got sick, so <laughs> the thirty just hit me like a train. <laughs> we'll we'll see how we'll see how it treats me, but we're we're not thinking about it too much. What uh, revelation you made after you turned thirty? That life is exactly the same as before <laughs> I was thirty. <laughs> no, uh, that's a lie. It's it's fine. It's I quit my job of like six years the week before I turned thirty. <laughs> to go like full time freelance, so like life is very different. Thank yeah. you. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Um, so yeah, life is very different just because of that. It's uh-huh. like a a third life crisis. <laughs> yes, because I'm I'm too old for it to be a quarter. Was it planned um, or was it something that you just wanted to do? Like you woke I, up one day thinking, "Yes, this is what I'm gonna do," and then you did it. Pretty much that. I got home from a holiday, and I'm, the week I went back to work, I was like, "I can't do it." I had a meeting with my manager and like quit on the spot. And I was like, huh, wasn't, ex- wasn't expecting that. <laughs> She's like, who am I kidding? You know, <laughs> who am I kidding? We saw this coming. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Tom, I'm so glad you finally made it. You know the drill. We're going to start with act one. And this is the part of the show where we take a closer look at some of your work. And Ooh. I know you brought a few with us today. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll start with the one you did of Art Simone. Uh, I know you mm. did a few merch design for her. So how did that come about? So Art and I have been uh, working together for like five years or something. Uh, at my job, I was I managed a paint and sip. Uh, very exciting stuff. But we used to do paint your in a queen sessions. Oh, well, we still do, but not with art anymore. Uh, we'd do paint your in a queen sessions where people would come in, they'd paint themselves as a drag queen, Art and I would be there. Uh, and we did we would do that a couple of times a year. So we got to know each other quite well during that. Uh, and every time I would paint her. Um, and then that slowly, uh, when she got onto Drag Race, she was like, let's do it. And we designed uh, the band t-shirt um so it was inspired by like grunge 90s punk while trying to incorporate that art side and was there something that you decide or it was like a, a decision you made together that this is a direction that y'all both wanted uh it was pretty much art okay she very much knows her aesthetic and what she likes to do and i'm, I'm quite good at tapping into that as well so uh, as soon as she said it i was like i get it and there was any question about who else could do the merch? That's what she told me, but who knows? <laughs> okay, who and then knows? the t-shirt was accompanied by the other sticker design, is that right? Uh, so it's a bookmark. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. So that came a few yeah. years later. Yeah, so it came a few years later. Uh, she announced her book at Drag Expo Australia, mm-hmm. uh, and she wanted a piece of merch for that. So a little bookmark. It came together in like a week. It came together really quickly. So her idea was a paint tube that had been squashed in a book. <laughs> Okay. Um, so it was a big squashed paint tube, uh, and then we did coloured tassels coming out of the top, so it looked like paint yeah, okay. So it looks yeah, like, like tubes fun. of paint with with colour. So yeah, maybe for yeah. those who might not know the process, so yeah, how detailed was the brief coming up with the merch? Or you have a lot of freedom in terms of um, your exploration. The she's very particular about what she wants which is really nice to work with because i do a lot of freelance work where people are like we want this we want this and then they have no idea what they actually want whereas art knows what she wants it's great uh she came to me with this is what we're doing i was like great let's do it makes it real easy yeah when you mention about clients not knowing what they want it's quite triggering for me yes a lot of we want it to be like this and then you give it to them and they're like oh 
no, we want it like this. So you redo it. And they're like, no, we want it like it was. Cool. I want it colourful yes. but clear. Then it's like, mm-hmm. wait, you can I want it colourful but black and white. <laughs> yeah. um, sorry, I'm not so sure if people understand that there's a difference between doing art for merchandising and mm-hmm. artwork that you post on social media. So mm-hmm. the work that you did for Art Simone, uh, was there anything different from your regular processing? Yeah, so it's, it's a collaboration. Uh, it's a back and forth. You send sketches, you get feedback. Whereas if you're just doing fan art, you're on your own and you just put in stuff out into the world. Yeah. Um, for whereas... design, it's like you have to satisfy a function, a, yeah. a client, and then instead yeah, of it's, it's like a... work. I don't want to say prefer it, but it, it's good to have the distinction between the two. So we talked about some of the merch art that you did, mm-hmm. um, but you also done a few other drag race mm-hmm. fan art as well. My favorite one I've kind of done, or the one that's kind of stuck with me for the longest, is the Karcha one. Okay, so yeah. So it's based on the Death Becomes Karcha runway from season seven. The first time I drew this look was back when the season first aired, and it's one of the pieces that I would check back in on every couple of years and kind of revisit to see how my skill has changed and how my style has changed and stuff. That's uh, So it's, yeah, Karcha uh in the sailor outfit with the shark uh attacking her leg yeah so so the most recent one i uh, tried to steer it away from being so clearly kacha and tried to like interpret it in my own like illustration style so yeah i used to do it every year and this one was 2021 i think i painted the most recent one is there something specific that you want to go in to try to improve when you do this piece not really it's just iterating trying to see how because my style changes so much year to year Uh like if you look back at the first one it is bad i'm not going to send you a a link but it is bad um (laughs) okay we're gonna post it on our socials okay we'll put it yeah (laughs) we'll put it on the socials (laughs) it's out there it's out there (laughs) no i'll I'll make them scroll through your feed to find it yes thank you you go back to yeah Yeah. what 2011 good luck (laughs) i don't even know it's still there you'll find it online (laughs) So do you do this for a lot of your pieces or is just the... Just that one is the one that I kind of come back to. That's fascinating. Okay. That's the first thing that really got me back into art kind of seriously. Because I've always drawn, I've always done like art through school and stuff. Were you doing mostly traditional before you move on to digital or were you always dabbling between the two? Always going between the two. I taught myself to use Photoshop when I was like seven to do forum signatures for Australian Idol. Like I was, I, I, I've always been a little computer boy code and websites and stuff since I was yeah seven, eight. So I feel like my digital work is a lot more, not simple, but more like simplified, angular, shapey, like, uh, and all the traditional art I do is a lot more realistic i guess i just the way that my hands react to the different tools is very different mixing colors is more intuitive with traditional art rather than digital is that a fair summary yeah i think traditional i just let myself be a bit freer Mm -hmm. i i I used to be very like vector like sharp lines when i did digital stuff but since i've kind of embraced both you try to bring a little bit of the freedom into the digital and a little bit of the like structure into the traditional and it's Mm -hmm. They kind of merge. Yeah. Going back to revisiting a piece, I mm-hmm. do that sometime with some of my work. Interestingly enough, the Katia Death Becomes Her piece is one of the ones that I revisited as well. So it's oh, a very it's fun iconic. one to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's super fun. You get to draw a shark. Y- yeah. Um, yeah, what they're not be the better? easiest thing to do. No. You know what? I've always thought drawing sharks were easy until... <laughs> And every year that I've drawn that piece, the shark has gotten bigger as well. I don't know why, but it's that thing's growing over time. <laughs> no, that's a that's um, subconscious, is it? Yeah, but yeah, it's a real shark that's <laughs> um, slowly growing through time. Um, okay, yeah. Before we close out this segment, maybe you'll share with us um, the most popular or well received mm-hmm. piece. Uh, I think it's the one you did of Gigi Good. Um, I can't remember the name of the runway. Yeah. yeah, well, it'll be on the screen. It'll be on the screen <laughs> yeah, sometime. Yeah. So yeah, that piece is... It was probably one of my favourites back back in the day as well. It's Gigi mm-hmm. Good's like, prom outfit with their headgear. 2020, during season 12, was when 
I was making the most fan art. Um, and yeah, I think that season was probably one of the more popular ones just in general in terms of reception to pieces. I don't know if you found that. It feels like the peak, like it couldn't get mm. any more popular. It's gotten more popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it was um it was kind of right before all the international ones took off, I think. Yes, I do agree. Um I think mm. I think that was it. Yeah. Because of that, that's generally when most of my work seemed to pop off the most. And I think the algorithm was better then as well. So I know sometimes there's a mismatch between the audience's favorite piece and then yeah. your own favorite. So let's say, I know this is your most popular or well-received by others. How do you feel about this piece personally? I think it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's very different to what I would make now. Um, there was a point where everything I made kind of looked like this with the kind of the watercolory texture, kind of looser stuff. And I feel like I was using texture to d- disguise skill. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to distract with a lot of stuff going on. Look over here. Yeah. Oh, look at all those ruffles. Oh, isn't that fun? Um, I don't know how to paint them. They're just squiggles, but we can we can trick everyone. Okay. Uh, I think maybe that one is because it was a cool look. It was there was less people in the season at that mm-hmm. point. I think it just kind of hit at the right time. How would you describe your style now? Are you still employing some uh, visual trickery distraction? Always. Uh, (laughs) I feel like I'm a lot more confident in what I'm doing, just in general. And I've kind of embraced shapes in a new way, where I I kind of got the fundamentals better. And now I'm focusing on, like, my style a bit more, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know if it's similar to you, but um, I think when you start out, you just want to be good at everything. And then yeah. as you do more work, then you realize actually doing less is better. Yeah. It's like there's some heavy handedness in all my older pieces. And I'm mm-hmm. trying to, you know, stay more relaxed or try to keep a yes. lot of that flow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm also, uh, I love shapes. I love wacky shapes. I love. I don't know, moving an eye, making an eye not in the right place. Like, mm-hmm. there's just something fun about playing with stuff. Yeah. And um, I- no, I agree. Okay, I know this is not shit or anything, uh, <laughs> but I feel like our aesthetic kind of belong in the same universe, and I don't yeah. know whether you see that or not. No, I see that. We both <laughs> we both like to exaggerate mm-hmm. and like play around with shapes and stuff. I have this weird feeling that either we watch the same YouTube video um, tutorials or we have the same references, visual library or aesthetic. Mm. Um, I feel that. If I were to retire from social media and I just want someone to just fill up my feed, I will hire you. (laughs) Thank you, that's okay. Thank (laughs) you. Can you just sit in for me? and (laughs) Just draw a full-time live stream. I mean, that's like back in the Renaissance and stuff. The rich people would just hire an artist to live in their estate and just create all the time. Mm. That's the dream. Yeah, I think that's the dream. Bring back that. Yeah, yeah, Bring yeah. back patrons. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like real patrons. Yeah, so ship me to a random estate in Germany and I'll just paint all day. Like, it's the dream. Okay, we'll start a, yeah, we'll start a Kickstarter for a patron. Yes, thank you. So- <laughs> yes. Not a Patreon. That's Not too much Patreon, work. I want I want one person. Okay, yes, yeah. Who pay- who I want to be a kept boy but it- for art. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, then I think we can close out Act 1 and we'll move on to Act 2. So we come to Act 2 of the show. We'll dive deeper into a selected topic related to drag and art. And today, we kind of or will be talking about fan art. Mm -hmm. Tom, I know you have very strong feelings about this (laughs) term in general. Me? (laughs) Me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do a poop sandwich. I'll start with the good, mm-hmm. and then you can mm-hmm. poop all over it in between, and then uh-huh. I'll end with another. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I started digital art only because I saw a lot of Jack Ray's art at the time, and then I decided, yeah, I want to do a piece, and then I kind of found a community of artists online. So for me, um, I have very mixed feelings about Jack Ray's fan art. 
as much as I love to be part of this community, I also feel like it's a little bit of a blessing and a curse at the same time. And mm-hmm. do you feel the same? Yes, I I don't regret making anything. I do, I, I think it's a really great community. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of opportunities have come because of making Drag Race fan art. But yeah. yes, I do have very strong feelings about how I feel about it now, <laughs> which we'll get into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, okay, wait. Which is more true? Mm, you're slowly transitioning away from drag art or you make a conscious <laughs> decision to stop? I, I think it kind of happened naturally. I kind of lost interest in making it. Not so much a, I hate this, I'm not doing it anymore. It's just, I'm not interested in making this anymore. Is that a slow progression um, towards that? Yeah, I think what the most recent one I've done was season 14. I did one piece of Bosco. And even then I was like, I'm just making this to please the algorithm. <laughs> I'm, I'm not actually enjoying making drag race art. I'm just doing it because it's popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? It's something that we don't want to get pigeonholed into to be just mm-hmm. fan artists. But at the same time, it feels necessary. A lot of reputable artists do fan art mm-hmm. as well. So I'm just curious what you think the function is for you. Well, fan art in general, I think, is great. It can lead to a lot of opportunities. I've heard of so many people who are like doing Overwatch fan art and then got employed by Blizzard, like it will get more eyes on it than your original work generally. Um, so I think it's it's great. It's very positive. Um, it reaches a point where if that's all you do, if you try to do anything else, it won't get received the same, which I think is what I was running into a lot. Does it affect you and your motivation to do art in general? I started having a lot more fun when I kind of stepped back from fan art. Yeah, I there was a point where everything I posted was fan art. I was constantly kind of getting followers. It was getting seen. All you want is like, I'm going to tag this queen. I'm going to get an our story. I'm going to get interactions. I'm going to, people are going to come to my page. I'm going to get growth. And it's, and then it's like, once you have that growth, what do you do with it? You have to make more and have to keep feeding the machine to keep it growing. And I, I reached a point where I was like, I was at uni, I was making like a short film, I was doing a lot of freelance work, I was like just doing a lot of personal work, and I would post it and get like 50 likes as opposed to the hundreds and thousands that you would get. And you're like, oh, is this good? And it's like, <laughs> am I good? And I think the constant, like, up and down of numbers was very, like, <laughs> it's not motivating. <laughs> you know? I understand. Um, it's um, yeah. to separate the people that follow you for your skills mm-hmm. or for the queens that they love. So sometimes it's very hard to tell the difference between, are you here for me and my skills? Yes. And am I a person to you? <laughs> or are you just here because and, you... And generally the answer is no. <laughs> 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 and I and I don't know how much is it to blame um, the algorithm. Sometimes I don't even see personal works of other mutuals mm. other than their drag race art. So I'm not so sure whether yes. the algorithm is feeding into this as well. Which yeah, how do you get into doing drag race fan art in the first place? Uh, the first thing I really posted it was back in the Tumblr days. It would have been season seven. It was the pilot episode, and it was come on chin strap. And it was Pearl with the chin strap. And just, I think Trixie says, come on, chin strap. And for some reason that stuck in my head and I made a a shitty vector illustration. At the time, were you aware that there was a fan art community or you just decided to draw it because um, you felt like it was something that you wanted to draw? The first season I watched was season six. So season seven was uh, fresh and on TV at the time. Uh, And I think the only person really doing fan art with chad sells who is is just an he's icon who's also moved OG. away from doing fan <laughs> yeah he's the og you you look yeah, up drag yeah. race fan art it's him yeah um yeah. um okay yes so I'm, I'm glad you brought up chad Sell. the reason why i started doing drag race fan art is because i was looking through his work and i was like oh mm-hmm. my god this is amazing i'm sure that there were other artists at the oh, time i'm sure but he was he was the uh, one he was yeah 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 yeah. And then 
of course, even Chad So is now retired from the mm-hmm. race fan art. So, you know, I'm guessing you're following this, a similar trajectory. I used to have a red bubble that I would sell just everything on. Anyone out there, don't start a red bubble. Oh, You'll no. make no money. Okay. <laughs> Cancel red bubble. Their their margins are bad. Their quality is bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I used to I used to make decent ish money off them. But um, I remember I started having weird, conflicting feelings about selling another person's likeness. It it was that whole like unofficial merch thing that is that's another topic for another <laughs> yeah yeah no, um, i know exactly uh what you're talking about yeah it feels a little bit wrong it feels right? a little gross yeah 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 I um that. and that's that's kind of the same reason i kind of stepped away from fan art in general i'm all over the place um <laughs> in this interview um no, 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 yeah no, the reason i kind of stepped yeah. away as i kind of got more into like the australian melbourne drag scene and became friends with queens and start, I started feeling like, why am I making art of a drag queen who will maybe never see it and has the money to pay artists? Like, why am I doing free labor for them? And then my friends like struggling and no one's thinking about them. No one's talking like, I don't, oh, it's a weird kind of dynamic. Like, how do you support your yeah. local girls? So, I don't know. It's It's a yeah. weird one. I'm quite interested in that. You you are quite close to a bunch of local queens um, in Australia and maybe in Melbourne. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So Melbourne, yeah. what do they think about fan artists or fan art in general? I, I don't think I've, I've never really had that conversation. It's more of like a personal like ick for me. It, it feels performative that I'm doing art for famous people. <laughs> It's when, like a... for free <laughs> when <laughs> when there's like local queens and I'm like I want to make merch with you let's do some fun stuff but it's hard to like approach that when it's like and you're paying me you poor drag queen who's putting their heart and soul into this you have to pay me to make up whereas fucking Katja who makes millions can who might not even a see bunch of free... half of the here you go yeah. who will never see it I don't think she's ever seen anything I've made. <laughs> Yeah, um, I wonder if it's similar to famous people getting free stuff. <laughs> but I also don't agree with that. Why? Yeah, yeah, why? Yeah. Because you're famous, you get special treat. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. I I used to work at a a big brand electronic store in Australia for ten years. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say the name, but my old name badge is here, so you can work that out. It's um, yellow in color. <laughs> uh, it's yellow in color. Um, so yeah, I worked there for ten years. Uh, mm-hmm. And it was always the entitled, annoying people who got what they wanted. And you'd have the nicest people come in and be so kind to you and you'd sell them stuff. And you're like, this is the only person I'm going to make any money off. So I have to charge them full price. Whereas the awful people come in being like, what's the best price? Oh, give me the manager, blah, blah, blah. They get everything they want. And it's like you're the person who's least deserving. I wanna, I want you to pay full price, and I want the nice person to get the discount. Yeah, and um, it, that's that's kind of similar to the drag. And it's like, why is this famous person getting all of the free stuff, but then I have to go to the little guy and be like, give me money yeah. for products? Have you had a personal experience with any drag queens with your fan art? Do you do meet um, and greets I, when the when the international queens come to Australia? I used to, um, and then I started. They got too expensive. They're ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I yeah, I used to do the meet and greets and stuff. Um, I think the last one I did did was like two, uh, season nine. I think it was Sasha and Trinity came to Australia. I think that's the last meet and greet I did. I'm not the type of person who will bring my art for them and be like, here's what I drew. I can't do that. I can't do that. I was at that meet and greet, so we're probably in the same line then. Uh, in Melbourne? Yeah, yeah, in Melbourne. At, yeah, at Chase's? Yeah. Yeah. Good show. <laughs> yeah, um, good show. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Oh, so you don't feel compelled to bring an artwork to worship the queen yeah it's my no 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 no. You. no 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 could never be me 
Um, it has a it, no no offense to anyone who does that. Like, mm -hmm. Godspeed, yeah. you're a stronger I mean, person than I. Yeah, yeah. But it, oh, I I would get too uncomfortable. <laughs> like, because they can't lie. Uh, like they they can't tell the truth whether they like it. They're like, this is great. You could it could be a stick figure, and they'd have to be like, this is incredible. Like I. I couldn't do it. Nah. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's unpack this. Is it that uh, you hate to put them in a situation where they have to... <laughs> Sorry. No, fuck them. It's me. <laughs> I don't want to put me in that situation. <laughs> to see like you could catch it yeah you could you'd be able to tell <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. do you feel like you can tell someone's lying very well yeah. okay and you don't want to have to endure the possibility of the queens yeah. lying to you yeah also i th it's i think it's a very australian like tall poppy syndrome thing where you don't put yourself out there oh okay um As, yeah i think it's a very that, australian thing to to be i don't mm, self-deprecating is it yeah yes okay um i feel like other other countries especially america are better at being like look at me look at i look at the work i'm i painted you blah blah, blah. give me whereas i think in australia it's a bit more like <laughs> yeah I understand. so after i left yeah. australia i moved to america to live there for three years um mm -hmm. so i i felt that difference um, as a yeah as a collective i think it's a lot more of a, a lot self deprecating. More... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I was at that same meet and greet, and I have an embarrassing story, which I uh, talked about in, <laughs> in an earlier episode, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, you're right. When you come to a drag queen presenting the artwork, um, yeah, there's no other response that you're going to get other mm. than, oh my God, I love it. Also, also, they have a line of 100, 200 people to get through. I don't want to take up that time. I'm in yeah. here, I get a photo, I'm out. <laughs> so do you judge uh, artists that um, brought their... No, no, not at all. Um, get your life. It's, <laughs> um, it's just not for me. Yeah, I used to do meet and greets. I used to think it was the coolest thing in the world to meet a celebrity. And now I'm just a bit, I don't know, I'm yeah, jaded and it's old. It's like, hmm, I'm a celebrity now. Who wants oh, yes, yeah. I, I'm a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> they should be paying to meet me. Um, no, I just think I don't care about it as much anymore. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if you know, there's, I did Trixie and Karcher's first meet and greet in Australia when I lived in Brisbane. And I went up and I was like, can you guys be like the twins in The Shining and holding hands, staring, blanking into the camera, and I'm going to stand next to next to you like a meter away. I thought it was so funny. They loved it. We took the photo. Karcha put it on her Instagram. And then it has become club posters. It is with me cropped out. I was standing just far enough away from them that people could be like, look at this fun photo of Trixie and Karcha. <laughs> And crop me out of it. Oh, and I no. have seen it on Pinterest everywhere. I've seen people in like Europe using it as club posters, being like, Trixie and Katja are coming. And it's like, no, that was, I was there. Oh, no. I was you, in that photo and you, you cropped me out. You were the art out. director for that photo. You were I was the... the art director. Okay, this was a big digression. Anyway, we just... you know, yes, <laughs> art. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, the reason why I'm familiar with your work because my introduction to you is your drag race fan art mm -hmm. um are you upset by being known by some people as a drag race fan artist i don't think i'm known for it anymore really i think there was a point where it did did bring a lot of people in i think honestly a lot of the people who came for that are gone because i haven't posted drag race fan art for like two years but i think yeah just my interest kind of shifted away my interest in drag race kind of changed. I had to stop looking at it as a, as like a drag race and started thinking of it as a television show. That's pretty, pretty colors and sounds. And I can just sit there for an hour and not think about it ever again. And I just need to enjoy it for what it is. And I think actively drawing something from every episode and like bringing that into my life was, I don't know, detrimental to my creativity. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's two things for me. There was a point where I'm forcing myself to do drag race art, but I also felt like 
I had to yeah. branch out into something else as well because I cannot just mm. be known for the person yes. that knows how to draw a drag queen. Yeah. Is likeness something you try to strive for usually for each portrait that you do? If if I'm doing fan art, yes. Um because you want it to look like the person. You don't want to like just put a random like Barbie head on top of another body and be like, see? Like you want it to look like the person. I think I think if you're making fan art and you're not striving to have it look like the person that you're trying to draw, something's happening. Whenever someone comes and tell me, oh, it kind of looks like someone else, I'm not as upset. Um, yeah. Does it affect you? <laughs> as much nah because generally i know <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh yeah generally, it's true yeah generally i know if it doesn't look like someone i was like yeah whatever and let people do go oh this looks like this person's work i get that a lot like <sighs> yeah i find drag art to be an easy source of inspiration it comes on tv every week and then you have a lot of visuals that accompanies the queen is it a hard transition for you do you feel like the job of engagement trying to find inspiration elsewhere is a a natural part the drop of engagement was hard but it was kind of good because uh, i used to spend so much time after posting something being like whose story is it on have they put it on their story i, I tag a person who's commenting whereas now because i'm just posting my own stuff it's like if someone enjoys it they're legitimately enjoying it and they're not just here because it's a person that they know um and even though i get less engagement now it it, it feels better Feels more genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just feel prouder when I put something that's completely original out into the world. Um, and I love the the pieces that you do did recently. I mean, I'm sure, hopefully, by now people are already scrolling through. Go, your... go look at my stuff. <laughs> so I'm so happy that you decide to make that that conscious decision. Yeah, I think it's a healthy balance mm-hmm. of, of getting your own stuff out. I remember um, when I graduated uni i have an animation degree um and at the end of it my teachers did like a little workshop talking us through like the next steps as we leave and whether we were to freelance blah 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 and one of the tips was limit fan art on your socials and oh uh, really this was an was... actual advice yeah. from a professional yes. oh, okay what was from the... a professional <laughs> uh, it's good every once in a while to bring new people to you but if artistic directors if people are coming to you they want to see more than just you copying someone even if it's in your style it's better to have people come to your page because of that but then see that it's not just that okay so i guess a tip for maybe those artists who might be watching for engagement growth for Mm -hmm. um for some kind of visibility the fan art is always good but it kind of pigeonhole yeah. you and it limits you to what Fully. you can do. And I, I don't want to, I don't want it to seem like I'm, like if you do fan art, you're bad because mm-hmm. that's it's not the case. But for me personally, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, and I think once I stepped away from it, it unlocked more of my brain to be able to put towards the fun, creative things. Think about what you want to draw, yeah. what you personally like, rather than what. Yeah an audience might like yeah okay um what will it take to convince you to revisit more drag race fan art again in the future has that urge slipped in and out every once in a while every once in a while you you see something and you're like that is so good um what was i watch uh drag race canada the premiere last week and uh what was that when he looked venus is that her name in like the red outfit with like the big hat and like all the and I was like, that's the, sick. The I want to, yeah. yeah. I was like, I want to draw that. But then I was like, you have so much other stuff that you need to draw. <laughs> you do not have the time to do that. Um, um, yeah, we need a sobriety coin thing. Fully, <laughs> it's like I need a little countdown up there, and it's like <laughs> four hundred and eighty days since last fan art. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And I've like yeah. sketched things occasionally from episodes. Um, just to get the itch like out. Like warm-up exercises, then... yeah. Whereas I want to put the the actual creative energy into into personal things. Yeah. So I guess um, the, the advice is you will encourage artists to dabble a little bit in it, but don't focus too much on it. Do, do what you love. It depends what you want out of your career. If you do want a career, you got to 
be able to uh, have variety. Unless you're doing art just for for fun, like a hobby, yeah. Um, not doing professionally for work. Um, so through doing your fan art, uh, is there something that you learn through the process? Any insight that you might want to share? F- uh, I think just every time you make anything, you get a little better and you learn something. Um, so I don't regret making any of it. I'm I'm not a a super famous popular artist or anything, but I have like a little bit of a following ish. Um, and I think a lot of that, a lot of, not even so much the followings, but the connections with other artists that I've made through it, like we wouldn't have met if we weren't both doing fan art. Um, the people who find you and like stick around are there for more than your fan art anyway. Um, I, I love the, the community that comes with it. And I also recognize mm. that most of my audience are other artists as well other artists yeah i don't know catch a lot of attention from non-artists surprisingly so Mm -hmm. um i don't know whether that's a good thing or not but i I think it's because if someone follows you you're more likely to follow them back if they're an artist and like make that connection yeah i agree with that um yeah i think people that stick around are also interested in art themselves Mm. um anyway i think that was great to hear your insights Tom, you'll always be a fan art artist to me. So, <laughs> thank you. <Your> pigeon... <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Thank you. <laughs> I know you uh... cringe at the thought of that. Eh, it's it is what it is. <laughs> People are giving me money. I don't care where they come from. <laughs> okay, well, I think that was a great discussion on the topic. Uh, so yeah, um, I think we can close out Act Two and we'll move on to Act Three. So in Act 3, I'm just going to ask you some random questions mm-hmm. and feel free to answer them as long or as short as you want. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. What is your childhood trauma and how did it manifest into your obsession with cowboys? <laughs> I, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted actual trauma and then it turned to a joke. I was like, thank God, because otherwise this is going to get dark. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboys are cool <laughs> aesthetically. Um, I had my thirtieth birthday party uh two weeks ago, um, and the theme was come dressed as a childhood photo of yourself. I love that theme, by the way. I'm so jealous that I wasn't <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, thank you. It was really fun, but literally every photo I found of myself was I was dressed as a cowboy. I don't know why. I don't know what my mother was doing. Um, I don't know if it was a me choice, but I dressed as a cowboy a lot. What was her uh, childhood drama? <laughs> she grew up in like a rural town, so there's probably something there. We'll come back next season and talk about... Just just cowboys. Should we do another one? Yeah, let's do another question. Okay, um, if your life was a movie, uh, what would it be mm-hmm. and why? I don't think it would be uh, any specific movie, but it would be like a shitty 80s B movie. So like Little Shop of Horrors, like Clue... Not shitty. These are incredible movies. They're yeah, not yeah, shitty, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. I know low, what you're low budget. About. Yeah. yeah, yeah, low budget like, '80s like cult classic. Is that something that your family watch a lot at home? No, they're not into it at all. <laughs> I think I was that really annoying movie kid. I wanted to be the different one. I'm I'm not like other girls. Um, I think that look. I think it started at Little Shop of Horrors because I loved that movie. That camp, like, ridiculous, stupid, there's something draws me to that. Yeah. Like, I'll keep bringing back to Clue. Clue is all set in one house, but the writing is so good that every single moment is a joke. Yeah. And you don't get that on a lot of things anymore. I have to confess that I haven't watched it. Um, you got to watch Clue. Okay, okay, you fine. you got to do, do it. I literally have Clue fan art. On my iPad at the moment <laughs> I, that I'm working on. <laughs> Remix? Because I've seen some in the past. Uh, a plug, I'm gonna I'm relaunching my store soon with a bunch of new stuff. Um, and I want to start doing conventions and like tabling at markets and stuff. So I'm working That's on a awesome. series of prints of like the Clue characters as either stickers or little prints. So I'm currently working on that. And then once that is on the ground i can oh my god start exciting. bringing it to other places yeah so next couple of weeks that should launch so okay well 
everyone uh you know what everyone tomoxnum.com okay yeah 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 um, okay hopefully by the time Good. we release this episode mm-hmm. there will be there'll be something um, yeah. by the way i know off tangent again i love your website thank you um no i'm, I'm at a point where i really aesthetically like what i'm doing which I think when I was making Drag Race now, it was just me exploring every single style. Whereas now I'm like, I can kind of distill my essence into a brand. Okay, I don't have any more questions, but you did mention that you have some Katya tea for us. Oh, is that... <laughs> so it's not Katya, it's Anyway, I don't want to take up too much of your time already. Um, uh, but thank you so much, uh, Tom, for making time to my chat pleasure. with me today. My pleasure, thanks for you promised me that you would bring chaos, but I thought you were very, very fun to talk to. Thank you. Back at you. Next time, oh. I'll amp it up. I'll have a real Okay, you, you, you <laughs> promise. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all for listening to Canvases and Queens. Please subscribe and never miss another episode. Please sound off in the comments and tell us who you want to see next or what other topics you want us to discuss on this channel in the future. Or if you want to see Tom back again with more chaos. Like this video if you enjoyed any part of this conversation and share this with a friend as well. You can follow us at Canvases X Queens on Instagram. And Tom, do you want to tell everyone where they can follow you? Uh, yeah, I'm Tom Oxnam on everything. I, I'm lucky enough to have a name that no one else has, so I can just... Yeah. Uh, TomOxnam.com, TomOxnam.art is my portfolio. Hire me. <laughs> Give me money. I'm, <laughs> I'm a free. I'm full time freelancer now. I need to. <laughs> I need to not drown. Watch the TikToks. Share. share Watch them. my TikToks. Uh, yesterday I filmed a TikTok and I spun in my chair too many times and gave myself motion sickness. So oh. let's uh, support that. Yeah, you just and, got uh, better. Can you not make yourself sick all the time? I literally felt bad for like five hours. See so look people. out for that. <laughs> Join me again in the next episode and until then, keep it artsy and stay fartsy. Bye! Bye. Yeah, will you be um, drawing in clothes or uh, semi-nude or... How much are we talking? How much money? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah.